so complicated. It feels like I'm dying. So much blood has just poured out of my nose. <laughs> it feels like the hardest thing ever to not do. What would you like for Christmas? Vlogmas day four. Huh? Huh? I didn't miss a day, but technically it's still December 4th, so. Starting early gave me a day of leverage, but I mean, I'm just gonna number them. I may only get to like 12, but this is the most I've uploaded in a long time. And I haven't vlogged at all today, it's almost four. I hate when I can finally turn left at a green light and there's a pedestrian just absolutely fucking sauntering, meandering. I know my AirPods Max are at home. I just got this camera and I don't really want to break it, so maybe I should wait till I'm, I'm not moving. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a cute couple with a baby walking by. Well, I'm about to get my nails did. Hopefully, I didn't make an appointment, but I'm just gonna try and walk in. I've never been to this place. I took one of my nails off. This camera is so bad at focusing. Um, yeah, here's the before. <laughs> finger hopefully i don't get a freaking bloody nose i in my life have never just randomly gotten a bloody nose i've only gotten a bloody nose when like i got hit with a soccer ball that happened a couple times but like i got directly hit in the nose other than that i've never had a bloody nose and then the past three days two two three days so much blood has just poured out of my nose and I, it's not because it's like dry because that wouldn't be producing that much blood i don't know if that's concerning i'm also like stuffy though i wonder if that's a symptom Oh, they're common due to increased blood volume. That's so. That's so weird that I'm not. I don't usually get nosebleeds, or I never get them. And now I'm one of the people getting them. But yeah, it makes, I guess, I don't know, I do feel like a lot of pressure in my head and... Okay, I'm gonna go try and get my nails done. This might be a fail, or they might be like, come back, and then I'll be like, mm, no. Well, I got my nails done. Literally took an hour and a half. I don't know why it took so long. There was other people there that, this other lady did two girls fill in the time that mine took. <sighs> I was i felt like i was gonna puke the shit pee my pants <laughs> like everything at once for pretty much that whole time i just i still have to pee so bad which is so annoying because i peed what 4 p.m and it's 5 20 something can't even go an hour without peeing actually i had to pee after like 10 minutes of being there i just am feeling it today in fact when i woke up this morning i could feel <sighs> this is gonna be a rough day and like it's weird ever since like the breakup and everything i will have like a really really bad day where like i cannot control my emotions and then that'll be followed by like two pretty good days maybe even like a really good day and then like a pretty good day and then it just kind of starts over <laughs> i didn't sleep at all last night i don't know if it's because like i can't take my well, I guess I, I can, but I'm choosing not to take my um, anxiety medication. And like, I would normally take that before I go to bed. I don't know, I, I got in bed at 4 a.m. and you would think I would be exhausted. I laid there awake and Bug was just laying on my stomach as she has been doing for the past like two months. At night, she sleeps on my stomach. It's a very smart lady. But I laid awake and I, I looked at my phone and I was like, it's probably been an hour. I looked at my phone and it was 7 45 and i had not fallen asleep i continued to lay there awake i fell asleep i think for an hour at like 10 at 11 i was like what what am i doing like i'm not sleep i'm clearly not sleeping like it's nighttime has already passed it's too late for me to be in bed and i'm still not but the thing is i'm still not tired and it's i think just my body is so in survival mode and so unwell but it's bad because number one like I know sleep is so, it's like the number one thing. First of all, when your hormones are fucked up, or not fucked up, I don't want to say they're fucked up, they're just a little all over the place right now, and it's normal. 
it's normal but it's so important to get sleep if no other time than right now i'm really trying to treat my body well obviously not drinking the only medication i'm taking is my seizure medication because i have to and that's fine i could i think be taking my anxiety meds and also um i'm also not taking sorry that was ironic because i was gonna say i'm not taking adderall either uh which i take because i need it i have adhd not taking my anxiety meds or the adderall is actually uh, my anxiety is out of control maybe that's also why I'm, i mean i always like i never am someone that sleeps a lot but for the past couple months it's been like uh, it's a disgusting amount of sleep like <sighs> yeah so anyway but not taking adderall and not taking anxiety meds just makes everything s even harder i don't know how i could have like created a more perfect storm of like unwell than currently not that i would want to like rely on anxiety meds i mean they're not i, ta I take it every day it's zoloft it's a very it's a low dose of zoloft i used to be on when i was in the hospital they put me on like 250 milligrams of zoloft and that was in 2017 the beginning of 2017 to this day i don't really know if it helped me because at the same time they put me on that i got to a healthy weight and my brain started working better and my body so literally since mid 2017 when i moved to la and i have a psychiatrist here i've had the same one the whole time i've been trying to come off of that so just like tapering it down and you have to go so slow because and honestly i'm I'm so glad I decided to start tapering down like that long ago. <laughs> I think I could have been off of it, but back in 2020 when everything with my ex Chad was happening, like she was like, okay, we're gonna put you up to 100 milligrams for a minute. And then I was there for like a year and I had to taper down again. I don't know why I'm telling you all this, but I also really need to go in the store right now. <laughs> and at Target, I need to get some groceries and then hurry home and change because I'm gonna go to a meditation. Hope I mean, I'm so... <sighs> anxious sad is this guy following me i swear i've seen this guy like three times today at different places and he was just outside of a pizza hut which was next to my nail salon and now he's here where else did i see him anyway every time we like lower my lowered my dose of zoloft i would get like brain zaps it's really hard to explain it's a very weird thing i was down to 25 for like this whole year pretty much in september i totally came off of them which was kind of perfect because we were going down in either 20 or 25 milligram increments like every three months so yeah that did take a long time actually to taper down but um and i didn't have like brain zaps i didn't really notice anything but i've been noticing a difference now after like eight weeks of not taking them i feel it like i feel like last night laying in bed i could just i, I could feel here like my heartbeat was like so fast and strong and i don't know where i started that off or why but I'm very anxious and also I don't know the word I guess the word is anguish I'm, fe I'm, I'm in anguish I'm feeling anguish it's not sad it's not it's not just heartbroken it's it feels so visceral like I f I physically feel and I've like looked into this before when like I guess the last time I was heartbroken which was the end of 2015 was like the last time i was really heartbroken you know because my previous two relationships before this one like it was a lot different one of them was hard but it was like it had been on and off the next one was uh it was like freeing because it was abusive and and this this one specifically is i feel all the way back to 2015 where i was just abandoned like out of nowhere and like i really didn't do anything but it's actually more intense because of i haven't like announced it on youtube or instagram or anywhere other than twitter for some reason i mean it's not for some reason it's because twitter is my smallest social media i have like 20 something thousand followers and i'm private and it's also like the platform that makes sense to like talk and it's like a depressing platform but anyway i was researching heartbreak especially as it relates to like someone like me and someone like my ex like it it actually genuinely feels like withdrawal from a drug physically and then also like that doesn't include all the emotional things also and that doesn't take into account my unique situation either and this guy that is standing in front of my car looks like a guy that i hooked up with in college and i i genuinely think it could be him
functioning right now. I'm gonna have to FaceTime my mom. I don't have to, I want to. I should. I just don't want to burden. I don't want to burden my mom with this, but. This is so complicated. How is he just not? I mean, that's a good question. We weren't even talking when That's not a, not a person you can have a relationship with. I, I don't know why you'd want to. Mm. I mean, he has all the power. He has the power. It's, you just need to be done with him. Because it's not healthy. It's not making you happy. Relationship. It wasn't until I was pregnant. Yeah, but it's like... Ugh. When things get tough, you know? No, that's not good. So, what do they say? So I'm going to... Tuesday. Oh, I have to let me know what they say when you go on Tuesday. Hi guys. I have been having such a great day. Feeling good. Like I said in the other couple days ago vlog, um, at night it gets hard. What is this guy doing? I'm at the gym, leaving the gym. I was gonna do, well, I started to do yoga class. I had to leave halfway through because I, I, I was, uh, again, feeling like I was gonna panic, feeling super emotional. It's hard because this gym is like right by my ex's house. There's like equinoxes in different parts of LA, but I have to drive to Manhattan Beach tonight, which this is the closest equinox to Manhattan Beach. It's only like 20 minutes from here and it would take me like an hour or so from my house. So I came to this one and I need to drive to Manhattan and I realized I like fully triggered myself because I drive to Manhattan like a couple times a month to pick up a medication that gets sent there. I don't know why they're still sending it there, but I just, whatever. It's fine because I like that Target. <laughs> but I, like I do this so often for over a year where I'll come to this gym, either go over there to see him and then go to Manhattan or I'll go from here to Manhattan and then go to his house on my way back home. And I like really sort of fully triggered myself in coming to this gym, but like it truly the only gym that makes sense to go to um but just i was trying to explain this to my parents yesterday they don't understand it but it's a breakup and a specifically a breakup where it's not just like grief and like heartbreak um i have an anxious attachment style which is why i tend to attract and they're also attracted to me more avoidant attachments and that's totally the situation I'm in now. And um, it is full like love withdrawal for me where I've researched it before and I know I screenshotted it. So I went back and found it and it's like normal breakup grief versus love withdrawal. It's normal for people who experience the loss of relationship, blah, 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 to feel hurt, pain, abandonment, reactions, sorrow, and heartache. They go through the grieving cycle and then heal. For the love addict and some with an anxious attachment style, the grief goes beyond the normal stages of the grieving process where they get stuck in one or more of the levels of grief, which turns into extremely, extremely painful withdrawal. It's not a withdrawal from drug or alcohol, but emotional. They ache, throb, anguish, desperately want relief. They experience a deep yearning and obsession to have any connection with their lost partner. Because they identified mostly through their partner's eyes, they feel a loss of self-identity because the symbiotic attachment, AKA addiction, is now gone. Withdrawing from love is life without the medication relied upon, coming down from the unrealistic fantasy to reality no longer available to numb and deny the self. And I think I talked about it earlier, probably in this vlog, because it's December 5th. I didn't upload, I did upload yesterday, but I'm combining yesterday and today's vlogs because there's honestly not much. What was I saying? Oh, how I'm like also having withdrawals from actual medication. Experiencing that and like extreme anxiety and like not sleeping. I again didn't sleep last night. Like it doesn't make any sense. Just my body. And then the love withdrawal, it's so true. It feels like I'm dying. You know? <laughs> Why does withdrawal sometimes feel like dying? It's a powerful addiction that causes a lot of pain. Like any other addiction, you likely experience wounding in childhood, childhood losses, trauma, and abandonment, which are unresolved and you have repressed. Well, I wouldn't say I've repressed anything and I 
felt like I had moved through abandonment things, but it has been triggered recently by this person. Then we got back together and things were worlds different, like way better. And then like I, I, I physically, there will be times throughout the day. Well, it's usually at nighttime where like I can't, I feel like I can't breathe. And it's not like a panic attack. It's just like, I feel like I'm dying and I cannot liken it to anything other than this very situation. I've never felt it this intensely. Like I said, I felt sort of like this love withdrawal from my ex after I graduated college, but it was different in the sense that like the next day I left and like we lived together in a different state and I left and went home. So I was really forced and it was hard, but it was, it was, and he, we didn't even block each other, nothing. But like, and I didn't like try to text him or anything. This is so different. Like he has me blocked for his own, uh, fuck it. Last bring up, you know. It's killing me. I need to drive to Manhattan. I need to just, I need to drive out of this parking garage and get on the freeway and go because you guys, I, I'm just gonna be real. Like every part of me is like, like, I feel like I can't breathe and every part of me wants to just like drive over to his house and try to see him, talk to him. I am, it feels like the hardest thing ever to not do, which is kind of why I started just vlogging right now, even though I haven't all day. It's, it is, and I've made it through like what, four days of not talking, not trying to reach out. Um, I, I was close to his area the other night, didn't go over there, but it's not getting any easier. I don't know, I'll update you in a minute. Hi, bubs. Hi. I love you. Hi. Why was that so zoomed in? <laughs> Do you have a new bed in here that you love? She loves the booby rug. Oh. <laughs> things to do, things to do. Laundry to fold. And I came home to two packages. I already have two stupid presents for him and like more in there. And I'm just gonna wrap them so I don't have to look at them anymore. And I don't have my tree yet, but I do have really cool decorations for it once I get it. What? What do you want? Do you wanna... Okay. Hear you, little monster. <laughs> Maybe this bike could be good for something if my camera would rest on it. It does sideways. You know I'm unwell when I'm taking off my makeup with a makeup wipe at home. Like, I usually keep them in my car because I had like a long drive home and I don't want to wait to like take off my face makeup. I'll use one, but when I'm home, no, I'm using my makeup eraser washcloth with micellar water, okay? But when I do use makeup wipes, bet your ass I'm using compostable ones. Or, yeah, recycled something, I don't know. I don't think I've shown you guys Bug's um, little room, her little mini hideout in my closet since I made it Christmassy. 
she's had a tree up in her room for like two weeks so that's you can see a little bit about me based on that information it's so weird i feel like i like never <laughs> vlog like this anymore i used to now i play with my child because i was just gone and she's bored you gotta play with your cats people get it get it <laughs> well you guys i need to end this vlog because i need to edit it and it's 1 a.m and i need to eat food and i need to i i need to do all of my only fans work <laughs> A lot to do. Are you over it? She gets over it after a while and then she's back into it. So this is what I do. I put one end in here, which is my games, and then try to stick it under something heavy-ish. And then it comes out like that. So she can play at her leisure. <laughs> Are you on your heating pad? That's actually mine. I will move that bike tomorrow. I don't care if I have to disassemble it and put it somewhere. It's pissing me off. Oh. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm sorry that this vlog was like a real downer <laughs> But if I'm gonna do vlogmas and I'm gonna vlog like I I would genuinely have to be acting and I would have to I, I wouldn't be able to <laughs> if it was to be real. I also think like It's good for me. I mean, I have a lot of goals I've always focused too much on Work and then if I'm dating someone I'm too focused on them and recently it's be it's been I'm way too focused on them and like a little bit work but it's good for me to have vlogmas it's like different than like my normal work it's like it's more creative it's it's also like expressive and i know it was very downer today but like it's real i don't know it's real so yeah i'm gonna end this vlog and i'll see you vlogmas day six also please subscribe it literally always says 90 percent of my views or no 80% of my views are from people that aren't subscribed. <laughs>